Rising demand for car and van travel is one of the central reasons why transport emissions in the UK remain stubbornly high. Electrification will have a part to play, but it goes nowhere near far or fast enough. More fundamental changes in behaviour will be needed. It was very encouraging, therefore, to see the prominence given to modal shift in the Department for Transport setting the challenge paper published in March this year. Recognition of the important role of public and active travel signified a welcome shift in government thinking. Four months later, we face a very different landscape. COVID-19 threatens to derail the vital role that public transport has to play in decarbonisation. A double-decker bus can take 75 cars off the road. The massive increase in active travel, travel is one of the high spots of the pandemic, but not all journeys can be walked or cycled. The impact of months of government urging people to avoid public transport is taking its toll. If public transport networks suffer long-term damage, there will be serious consequences. A 10% decrease in public transport connectivity is associated with a 3.6% increase in social deprivation. A third of people in the UK have deliberately caught the bus to have some human contact. And we must be careful that we don't replace one health crisis with another. Discouraging people from using public transport as a way of ensuring social distancing removes one of the most efficient ways of tackling air pollution, which is responsible for some 40,000 early deaths every year here in the UK. Diesel cars and vans are responsible for more than two thirds of NOx emissions from transport. A modern diesel bus produces fewer emissions overall than a modern diesel car, despite having 20 times the carrying capacity. Furthermore, recent studies have demonstrated a direct link between long-term exposure to PM2.5 air pollution and higher infection and death rates from COVID-19. A spike in air pollution caused by increased car use would aggravate any future respiratory pandemic. We need a green recovery that delivers on the net zero target. COVID-19 has accelerated some structural changes in the economy, which should be harnessed to assist in decarbonisation. For example, digitalisation has transformed the way that we interact with the economy. There is a powerful case for investing in broadband rather than building new roads. At the same time, we need a more efficient system for freight and logistics. Otherwise, growing internet shopping will further exacerbate trends to slower traffic and worsening congestion to the extent that it could bring our roads to a standstill. In nose to tail traffic, emissions from vehicles increase fourfold. Public transport must be at the heart of a green recovery. As government attempts to encourage people back to work, it is becoming painfully apparent that there can be no real restarting of the economy without public transport. The fundamental role of mass transit in facilitating essential economic activity remains as relevant today as it ever was. The forthcoming national bus strategy must reboot buses but it must also maximise the wider social, economic and environmental benefits of bus travel. Instead of building new roads, we must make better use of our existing road capacity by use of demand management measures like the workplace parking levy, city centre entry restrictions and road pricing. And we've got to get the price signals right. At a time of record low oil prices, the Chancellor really should take the opportunity to increase fuel duty. The freeze in fuel duty since 2011 has caused 5% more traffic 
an additional 5 million tonnes of CO2 emissions, a quarter of a billion fewer bus journeys, and 75 million fewer rail journeys. Instead of planning for vehicles, we need to plan for people and places. The integration of public transport with new housing and land use planning will be essential if we are to reduce emissions. New developments in urban centres, well connected by public transport, can stimulate 50% more economic growth than equivalent developments located on the fringe, whilst dramatically reducing congestion and pollution. We need a major shift from private transport to public shared and active travel. The Transport Decarbonisation Plan will need to address every aspect of how we live our lives. Decisions about where we work, how we purchase our goods, which car we buy, how we travel, or whether we even choose to travel at all, will be critical in determining whether or not we are able to bring emissions down onto a safe trajectory.